coming up. We head out to the hardwood for some high school hoops. Basketball season is in full swing, and we're highlighting some of the weekend's district action. We'll also hear from this year's Dallas ISD Holiday Tournament champions and the number one ranked boys team in Class 5A. They're the Lancaster Tigers in our studio tonight. Also, a milestone win at North Crowley this week for the program and the only head coach they've ever had. And a very special guest joins us. Legendary head coach and soon-to-be Hall of Famer J.D. Mayo stops by to talk basketball and more. This is the Chevy High School Sports Special, sponsored by your North Texas Chevy dealers. Chevy drives Texas. High school basketball teams getting to the district part of their schedules. Lots of key games from this weekend for us to highlight for you. Hello, everyone. I'm Taylor Williamson, and you're watching the Chevy High School Sports Special. It's a new year on the calendar. Also time for us to turn our full attention to hoops. And with all the holiday tournaments out of the way, it's time for teams to focus on the games that count. Big rivalry game in District 12-5A Saturday, South Oak Cliff and Kimball. Both teams ranked in the state's top 20. It was tied at 43 in the third quarter at Ellis Davis Fieldhouse, but Kimball closes out the period on a 7-0 run. Marcus Bonner's layup in transition for the Knights put Kimball up 50-43 going to the fourth. That's when the shots start falling again for South Oak Cliff. Jimmy Wyrick coming up with the turnover within the basket to make it a three-point game at 50-47. to And later, the Golden Bears will take the lead on the jumper by Tyron Miller, all part of an 8-0 run for Sock to begin the fourth quarter. After Kimball retakes the lead, Sock goes back in front with Antonio Peterson. Patterson, I should say, drives for two and draws the foul. He would make it a three-point play and a two-point Sock lead. But in the final four minutes, Kimball would outscore the Golden Bears 20-5. to Kobe Williams getting 10 of his 14 points in that span. DeWante Lee putting the exclamation point on it with a wide open jam at the other end. And Kimball puts away South Oak Cliff 74-57 the final. The Duncanville Panthers, fresh off of their Whataburger Tournament Championship last week, visiting the Lake Islands Wildcats Saturday in District 86A. Duncanville wins the tip-off, and it takes the Panthers about two seconds to score. Micah Peavy gets the two-handed jam for the opening bucket, and the show is just getting started for Duncanville. After Lake Islands ties it, Duncanville scores the next eight, including that alley-oop from Derek Luna to Jamius Ramsey, who throws it down for two more. Panthers lead by six before Robert Banks hits from long distance, the corner three there, and Banks will do it again with a three-pointer from the top of the key. After a timeout, Lake Highlands closes the gap with a deep ball here from Langston Flowers, but Duncanville proves to be too much for the Wildcats. Robert Banks will drive the lane this time for the one-handed dunk, and next Jamius Ramsey will start the break, and he'll finish it to Ramsey on the receiving end of another oop. Duncanville putting up 29 points in just the first quarter and saving the best for last as Ramsey passes off the glass to Micah Peavy, and I guess that's why they call it Duncanville. The Panthers are good. They beat Lake Highlands 77-45. Girls basketball now, District 9-6A leader Prosper hosting Plano West. Both teams rank in the state's top 25. Early in the first quarter, Prosper breaks the 2-2 tie win. Mackenzie Verholtz, a three-point basket, catches nothing but the net. And the Lady Eagles were off and running. Next bucket, Prosper again from three-point range. Maddie Cleary from way downtown, and the lead grows to six. Plano West will score next when Morgan Smith gets the ball back from Mary Grace McDowell. Smith scoring two of her team high 12 for the Lady Wolves. It's a four-point game before Prosper closes out the quarter on an 8-0 run. Madison Willis-Rosa with a couple buckets in that span. Then in the second quarter, this is Scout Huffman. She's going to score off the inbounds pass. Scout on her way to scoring 17 for Prosper. That was second in the game to Jordan Oliver. Oliver getting two of her game-high 21 points for the Lady Eagles and Prosper sits alone at the top of the district standings. They beat Plano West 59 to 36. In the 5A ranks, number four Northwest Texans playing host to the number eight, the Colony Cougars. First quarter action, Northwest Julian Smith gets it on the wing. 
and he'll go right to the cup. Gets the basket to go, and the Texans are on the top early. Later on in the quarter, the colony with some nice ball movement in transition translates into a throwdown for Bryce Ocpo, and we are all tied. Time running out now in the first quarter. Luis Rodriguez trying to beat the buzzer, and he does just that. Drills the triple, and the Cougars lead after one. Second quarter now, it's Smith. He's going to get the jumper at the free throw line to fall. Northwest will win this one 58-55. More highlights still to come, but right now we turn our attention to a basketball program and the only head coach they've ever had. That program and its coach hit a milestone victory this past week, and they're the subject of tonight's Spotlight, presented by Texas Scottish Rite Hospital for Children. The expectations at North Crowley are always high, and this year is no different. My hope is to go far, San Antonio. This team's capable of uh, going all the way. Sky's the limit. The reason for those high expectations starts with Panthers head coach Tommy Brackle, the only head coach the program has ever known since it opened up in the late 90s, and a man who just picked up his 600th victory. As you step back and you self-reflect on things, it just, it, it can be a little bit overwhelming at times. Um, you know, we've been doing it for a long time here at North Crowley, 21 years, and um, obviously we've been doing a few things right anyway. Coach Brackle also has a state championship ring from his time with the Panthers and has earned the respect of his players. Two former standouts serve as assistant coaches on his staff. Coach Brackle was saying that, man, you're calling his coaching, man. I want you to, you know, think about it, come do it. So. I uh, came and, and started coaching uh, for Coach Brackle. All the stuff that we do uh, as a team, I mean, that, that's helped me in life off the court as well. So, I mean, it means a lot to be a part of this. And the 16-time district title winner continues to have an impact on present-day Panthers. I mean, it's an honor being playing with Coach Brackle and being a part of this big organization. He holds us accountable to everything and make us responsible. So taking that into college and on past North Crowley is going to help me a lot. Brackle shows no signs of slowing down, but even when he does, he'll be forever linked with the program he built. To be the only coach that North Crowley has ever had and for this to be the only head coaching job that I've ever had, I think it just ties us together. Even that, that makes that bond even that much stronger. One of the top basketball programs around, and it should be for many more years and wins to come. We've got more highlights on the way, plus guests in the house, the top-ranked Lancaster Tigers. Join me next when the Chevy High School Sports Special continues. Welcome back to the Chevy High School Sports Special, where we continue now with highlights from this weekend's district basketball action. Class 5A's number one ranked girls team is Mansfield at Timberview. They were hosting Burleson Centennial in District 5-5A on Friday. Timberview with the ball late in the first quarter. Kennedy Wilson will step back and take the shot with her toe on the three-point line. It's good for a long two-pointer, and the Wolves lead by eight after a quarter. Centennial scores first in the second, though. Jolie Johnston with the to Tristan Clark in the lane. Lady Spartans make it a six-point game. But Timberview scores the next four, including points off the break when Desiree Wooten takes the outlet pass and feeds Destiny Jackson, who gets the basket and the foul. She would make the free throw for a three-point play. Then check out the inbounds play by Timberview. All five players going to touch the basketball before Jackson puts it up and in for two more. Wolves starting to pull away in this one, and they would go on to win by 31, 69-38 the final against Burleson Centennial. Up next, the boys game between Centennial and Timberview. Timberview currently number two in the state 5A rankings. Good start for the Wolves in this one. Trezarian White getting the ball back from Tristan Starks. White scores in the paint to give Timberview an early 10-3 lead. Timberview spreading the ball around to several players. This is Marquise Childs finding C.J. Smith in the corner for three. He hits it, and the Wolves put up 27 points in the first quarter alone. Centennial keeps it respectable, though. They get a team-high 26 points from Zachary Bolf, who gets underneath the basket. Bolf just a junior for the Spartans, but 
Leading all scores in this game is White. He'll finish with 29 for the Wolves in an 85-76 win over Burleson Centennial. After winning the Dallas ISD Holiday Tournament last week, the Lancaster Tigers rose to number one in the TABC Boys 5A state rankings. They're off to a 2-0 start in district play as well. And tonight, head coach Farron Douglas and his team join us in studio. Guys, thanks so much for being here. Thanks for having us. Thanks for having us. All right, Coach Douglas, we're going to start out with you first. As I said, y'all won that DISD tournament here recently. What does that mean to you guys, and how can you use that as kind of a measuring stick? Um, the DISD tournament has always been a great tournament. Um, it's always been a measuring stick for us. Um, in the past, you know, if we won this tournament, we normally went down to the state, uh, state tournament in San, San Antonio. Um, I think the guys... Um, was wanting to win this tournament. Um, we have a, a, a team full of guys that hasn't won this tournament, so um, it was a big tournament for us to win. And hopefully you guys are talking state here in a couple months. Uh, we'll move on now to Mike Miles. He's a junior guard for the Tigers. And Mike, you've been on this team since you were a freshman, a junior now. How have you seen this team grow and improve over these last couple of years? Uh, since my freshman year, we've improved a lot. We've gotten better every single season. Last year, we lost in, in the regional finals. So, you know, we're, we're hungry this year, and we're going to make a run for the state championship. All right, next up we have Wade Taylor the fourth. He's going to tell us a little bit about the team strengths. Wade, what, what is it that makes this team so good this year? Um, our strengths this year are that we all, we all love each other and that we can all play. So, you know, usually some teams have – Main, kid, main kids that have egos, but on this team, we don't have any egos, so we respect on what we talk about, and we just we do what we can to get a W. All right, next up, it's DeMonte Williams. Yeah. He's a senior guard for the Tigers, and DeMonte, there's obviously several seniors on this team. Uh, what have y'all had to do in terms of leadership, and how have y'all helped show some of the underclassmen how things are done? Uh, our seniors at Lancaster, we just walk around the school with our head high. Make sure the youngsters get to class on time. Be the glue of the team, vocal. Do the little things to help us win and get to a state championship. So, yeah, you talk about senior leadership, and now we're going to hear from another senior, Jalen Roberts. He's a guard for the Tigers. And, Jalen, you know, with that leadership, you start to build a little bit of rapport with some of these younger guys. You know, what, what, what's the chemistry like? What, what's the brotherhood that this team has developed? Uh, yeah, that's one thing I want to touch on. Uh, our brotherhood is very strong on and off the court. You know, there's nothing that goes on off the court that we don't do together. And I think that's going to be major going into the state championship in March. And you certainly find that some of the best teams are the teams that like each other. And we've heard state mentioned several times. We're going to go to Marco Foster now. Marco, I mean, what, what is the expectations? What, what does Lancaster want to do this March? Yes, we got big expectations going on for it. You know, we're going to move on from the first part of the season. We're trying to win state. We're going to work every day in practice to get better so we can win this thing. And you guys are certainly off to a great start this season, the perfect start in district. You guys are number one in the TABC ranking, so obviously a, a, a great first couple of months. We'll circle back around to Coach Douglas. Coach, I know you've got to be pleased with what you've seen from this team so far. But I know coaches are always looking for even the little things to improve on. What, what do you want to see these guys do better as we go through district play and get closer to postseason? Um, we always can get better defensively. Um, rebounding is always one of the main focuses that we focus on in practice. Um, these guys, um, they work hard every day. So I think if we can just come in and work hard every day and, and focus on defense, um, I think um, that will be half the battle to our goal and just try to, uh, try to create our own look. All right, well, hopefully we're having the same talk come March. And, guys, thank you so much for joining us today on the show. Thanks for having us. All right, that's the Lancaster Tigers. When we come back, more hoops highlights are on the way. And legendary coach J.D. Mayo stops by next on the Chevy High School Sports Special.
The girls from Cedar Hill won the prestigious Sandra Meadows Tournament in Duncanville last week. This week, district play continues for the Lady Longhorns against the Mansfield Summit. Summit down four at halftime, but the Lady Jaguars start the third quarter by scoring the first two points. Tamisha Lampkin with two of her team high 12 makes it a two-point game. Both teams trading baskets early in the second half. This is Destiny McDowell for Cedar Hill making it a four-point game again. McDowell would also finish with 12 points for the Longhorns. Summit answers with Destiny Terrell getting wide open for the jumper to get the Lady Jaguars within two again. But Summit couldn't get any closer after that. Cedar Hill starting to pull away. Check out the driving layup by Dejanae McCarty. One of two players to score a game high 14 for her team. The other would be Portia Adams who hits that three-pointer in the corner right in front of our cameraman. Clutch for the sophomore. Cedar Hill uses a big second half to win big against Summit. 58-31 to is the final. Summit and Cedar Hill's boys teams take it to court after the girls game. Summit leads by two at the start of the second quarter. Jaguars getting the ball inside to Nicholas Davis for two. And Summit would start building a lead in this one. Daniel Martabi hitting a couple of three-pointers in the second quarter. The latter giving the Jaguars a 14-point lead with about two minutes remaining in the half. Summit continues to pour it on in the third quarter. Another three-pointer, this time by True Hardison. And it's a 21-point lead for the Jags. Summit spreading the scoring around with two players leading the way, Shannon Miles and Deshaun Miles, each contributing 16 points. 65-45 is the final as Summit stays within one game of district leader DeSoto. In 41 seasons of coaching, J.D. Mayo won more than 800 games, mostly at Dallas Skyline, where he coached future NBA greats Larry Johnson and C.J. Miles. He's a past president of the Texas Association of Basketball Coaches, and this May he'll be inducted into the TABC Hall of Fame. And we're honored to get to talk to the legend himself tonight. Welcome, Coach Mayo. Thank you so much for joining us this evening. It's our, our pleasure, and uh, we're honored to be here. Well, we're honored to have you, and, you know, First off, we're not gonna, we're not going to talk about your coaching days. We're going to talk about a little bit of what you've okay. done yeah. post coaching. You have this magazine. This is the fifth edition, J.D. Mayo's Full Court Press. How does one transition from being a legendary basketball coach to getting into the magazine game? Well, I'm not that much involved with it. When I was approached five years ago, there was not a Texas basketball magazine, and so with that. A group came to me and wanted to do a magazine and use our name and so I'm involved uh, in some ways uh, worked out a, a business plan and some advertising and things like that but Garland Hancock is the uh, publisher and editor he's a Katie Award winner he's a great writer and this magazine is just filled with a lot of uh, statistical uh, information that chronicles achievements from the previous season and uh, it's a uh, it's an outstanding magazine uh, and it's uh, uh, just written in, in a great way uh, I'm, I'm proud to be a part of it and uh, you know uh, on the front of this we've got a couple of very good players from this year uh, you got Tyrese Maxey and Nia Green yes sir. You, you know what why, why did they make the cover, and, and what, what, what's kind of your impression on those two players? Well, they're outstanding uh, players and a lot of different publications. They have them uh, not just top in Texas, but they're in the top uh, in the nation. In fact, Tyrese is already signed with the University of Kentucky. And uh, Nia Green, she's from Allen. She plays for Allen High School, plays for Coach Durham, Teresa Durham. And uh, she's already signed with the University of Louisville. And so uh, we usually put uh, what we think are the top players on the cover. Last year, Quentin Grimes, who plays mm -hmm. at the University of Kansas, he was on the cover of the magazine. And Coach, moving from the magazine to a little bit more about your uh, coaching career and what's looking forward, you're being inducted into the Texas High School Basketball Hall of Fame this May. Uh, how exciting is that for you? Oh, it's uh, super exciting, uh, very honored and privileged. Uh, it's rather surreal for me because the game is really about, you know, the, the players and uh, not just teaching them the game of basketball, but teaching them about life. I call it a double go coach. And so uh, I've just been truly honored to, uh, to be in a position to uh, 
to coach and and uh, some of the greatest players in the world and some of the greatest students in the world. We've just, uh, I call it a handful on purpose. You know, the Lord just uh, dropped down those handfuls on purpose. And we were able to uh, speak into their lives. And I believe that a coach should make a difference in a youngster's life. And at an early age, I discovered my purpose in life. I was born and raised in the free state of Van Zandt County in Texas. And so I discovered my purpose, and not long after that, I discovered my passion, which is sports, basketball, and education. And it was the Fellowship of Christian Athletes that I was introduced to my first year to teach and coach as an assistant coach. And it helped me to weave, the FCA helped me to weave my purpose and passion together in a public school setting. Well, Coach, you certainly made the most of that opportunity. I think I speak for a lot of people well, you're kind. when I Thank say you. that. And uh, before we let you go, people want to get a look at J.D. Mayo's Full Court Press. What do they need to do to get their hands on this magazine? Yes, you can uh, get one at our website. It's J.D. Mayo's Full Court Press .com for $10. Postage paid. Quite a deal. And you can get uh, a magazine, and it's, uh, it's an outstanding uh, magazine. A lot of resources in there. Okay. Well, Coach, thank you so much for coming on here with us and uh, grace us with your presence. I really appreciate it. Well, it's our pleasure. To God be the glory. Absolutely. The team of the week is next, so stay with us. Now, here's your Chevy team of the week, sponsored by your North Texas Chevy dealers. Ever since winning the Whataburger Tournament last weekend, the Duncanville Panthers have been on a roll. And that continued Saturday in their district game at Lake Highlands. From the opening tip-off, it was showtime. Micah Peavy gets things started for the Panthers. Then it was Derek Luna to Jamius Ramsey. Two-handed dunk, the end result there. And after hitting a couple three-pointers, Robert Banks drives the lane for a dunk. Then Ramsey again starting the break and finishing it two. All this in a 29-point first quarter for Duncanville, ending with Ramsey going off the glass for Peavy. What a show as Duncanville wins again playing their best basketball of the season so far. The Panthers are the Chevy team of the week. District basketball play continues this week and will be at it again, highlighting more great matchups. The Lancaster Tigers have games coming up against Poteet and Kaufman. We want to say thanks one more time to head coach Farron Douglas and his team for being here with us tonight. And thanks to all of you for watching the Chevy High School Sports Special. I'm Taylor Williamson. Have a great week, everyone. This has been the Chevy High School Sports Special, sponsored by your North Texas Chevy dealers. Chevy drives Texas.